This picture from the Methodist art collection is oil on canvas and it tells us the bit of the story that comes after the long journey of Mary and Joseph and the birth of Jesus. Albert Herbert's Epiphany shows us the Magi at the far left of the painting and it reminds me of this story from Imagining God by Trevor Dennis. A child is born. The journey from Jerusalem to Bethlehem was not a long one, just a few miles. They knew where to go. The religious authorities in Jerusalem had told them. In fact, they would have known the way without their advice. To their clever eyes, the movement of the heavens were clear enough. The light of the stars, so bright in the winter's sky, were drifting perceptibly towards Bethlehem and the constellations seemed to bend their shapes in its direction. Slowly they moved on. They said nothing. Their encounter with Herod and his advisers lay heavy on their thoughts. They who understood the signs in the heavens were trying to penetrate the dark recesses of the human mind. At last, one of the women broke the silence. I still can't work it out, she said. We told them they had a new king, the king they'd been longing for for centuries. We told them. And when we asked, they told us where to go to find him. Why then are we travelling to Bethlehem on our own? Why haven't they come with us? What are they afraid of, said the second woman. Can't you guess, said one of the men. Herod is a king, the king of the Jews. We asked the king of the Jews if he could tell us where the king of the Jews had been born. For him, two kings in his kingdom is one king too many. The place where we are going will have to be on its guard against Herod, I can tell you. Oh yes, cried the woman, I realise that. And I share your fear too. But what of the religious authorities? The one who spoke of Bethlehem? What of them? And interrupted the other woman. What about the people of the city? We stirred up the whole place when we started asking our questions. Everyone talking about him. What happened to that excitement? They too have been waiting for this day for centuries, battering their God's door down that it might come. Why aren't they with us? Why aren't there thousands and thousands on this road? Why aren't they running ahead of us to see who can get there first? The fourth member of the little party had been looking about him. At least the foxes are with us, he said quietly, and the cranes. The others looked to the right and to the left and to the sky. In the unusually bright light of the stars, they could see the shapes of foxes running silently through the fields and lines of cranes were crossing the strand of the Milky Way. They were all making for Bethlehem. The four of them quickened their pace, one or two of them gladdened by the company of the animals and birds, the rest even more conscious of their loneliness. They could hear Bethlehem coming before they got within a mile of it. All the people of the town were out. They were singing and the sound stopped the four travellers in their tracks. The procession of their song and the golden lights from their torches wound its way towards them and soon they were surrounded. Where did you learn that song? they asked. The angels taught it to us, someone said. Or rather, the angels taught it to the shepherds and the shepherds taught it to us. Shepherds? Where are the shepherds now? At the back of the procession, but you won't recognise them. The stranger laughed and slapped one of them on the back. They're the best dressed shepherds you're likely to see this side of heaven. The people streamed past them still, but eventually they could see the last few torches coming near. And there they were, three shepherds dressed up as kings and riding on camels, singing angels' songs. They had never seen such a sight before. The camels stopped beside them, and with that, the awkward elegance of theirs. And they sat down, and the riders got off their backs. Welcome, welcome, the shepherd kings cried. We knew you'd come, though we were hoping for more of you. Where 
is Herod and all his important people and the people of Jerusalem? Did none of them come with you? None, they said. The shepherd kings shifted uneasily. Still, you're here, they said. We'll take you to him and we'll teach you the song on the way so you can sing it to him as well when you get there. And after you've been with him a while, we'll teach you and everyone else the angels dance. The fox and the cranes know it already, but we haven't taught it to the people yet. We were waiting for you. The procession turned about, reformed itself and took its light and music back to the town and to the child who'd been born there. In the central square, a young couple waited for them. A baby, wrapped warm against the night's cold, lay asleep in the woman's arms. The lights of the torches ringed around them and the soft singing embraced them. And so it was that the wise men and wise women came from the east to Bethlehem and heard there in that small, unremarkable place the angel's song and found there in that tiny form asleep in a woman's arms, the very love of God. And it was much, much more than they had come for, quite beyond their wildest dreams. Take him, the young woman said. He's yours too. One by one they held him in their arms and sang to him their new song. And as they did so, the shepherd kings started a slow, rocking dance and the people caught their steps till the whole crowd moved as one and it was as if they danced on air above them dawn came and the sky was full of cranes dancing that angels dance between the legs of the people the foxes bent and curled and brushed them with their tails the fourth visitor had the child in her arms it's all heaven here she said no one could hear that other sound above the noise of the singing. Though some, some of the cranes flew off in alarm and a few of the foxes disappeared up the dark side streets. Some way beyond the town, the dust of Jerusalem roads were beginning to be marched into the air by soldiers' feet, enough to hide the morning star. <laughs>